I need to ask you a deep personal question, and I want you to take your time and think about it, and let me know where you stand, okay? Are you horizontal, or are you vertical? This is a dumb fucking joke. Europe is next on deck to crown a November 6th major champion this weekend, and I think it's a pretty interesting development. It's literally Team France against Team Russia. With how diverse Europe is, I didn't think that this is something we would ever see, even though the European mini-majors have only ever been four teams. It's honestly kind of cool. To see teams like G2 and Rogue and Na'Vi even not make it to this major is a little bit surprising if you only consider hindsight from the beginning of Stage 2 and don't factor in that Rogue literally didn't do anything. <laughs> BDS and Virtus Pro make their returns to the November major after playing it back in August, only this time they're joined by a resurgent Team Empire and and an upstart Temper Esports. Didn't see that last one coming at all. That's not a bad thing, though. It's difficult for me to put Tempra anywhere significant in this prediction because they just feel like an underdog team, but we'll go over that in a second. The prize pool for Europe is $125,000, though perhaps the bigger prize is securing enough global standings points to make it to the Six Invitational. BDS are already locked in after winning the August Major, while Virtus Pro is trying to secure their position as well. Though because neither Tempra nor Empire made it to the August Major, and because they had really low standings in Stage 1, my current understanding is that they can't make it to the Invitational unless they win the November Major outright. If they clear through this bracket and win the whole thing, then they have an invite spot. Otherwise, it's down to the EU qualifier to decide who else from Europe can go. I'm about to curse somebody you really like. I am so sorry. You know the drill on the format already. Semifinals in the first lower bracket match are played on Friday, upper and lower bracket matches played on Saturday, and the grand final on Sunday, which also features the Operation Neon Dawn reveal panel just before it, so make sure you don't miss out on Sunday. If nothing else, just come and join the cancer that is Twitch chat. It's... It, it, it's bad every time. First game. It's a pretty hype one. It's BDS against Virtus Pro. Either one of which I would be cool winning the whole bracket, but somebody's gotta fall into the loser portion. Either way, I think it's safe to say the winner of this match goes to the grand final in the winner's column with a one map advantage, but we really do just have to pick one here. Both of them were in the August Major last time, VPs made improvements and had a better record in Stage 2, so there's clearly something working out here, but... I'm not gonna say it out loud, but you know what I'm thinking. The second semifinal is Empire versus Tempera. I love how this seeding gave us two teams that did really, really good over the past six months against one another, and then the two teams that recently had a resurgence in the standings doing the same thing. My story nerd brain is coming up with all these cool ways to spin this, but I'll save most of them for now. Empire, for me, is a team I have a lot of confidence in right now. They were eighth place in stage one, but then got back up the ladder to make it all the way to second for the major. They went through some much needed role changes to get them there. They seem like they've expanded their map pool at least a little bit, and they also have the confidence factor, because it's still four-fifths of the team that made Empire a household name in 2019 with the same support staff and org structure. It might be a little premature to say that they're back, but this is the chance that they need to fully redeem themselves. I think Tempra's just... Tempra's just in the wrong place at the wrong time for this one, dude. But... They aren't out of the running yet. Friday's lower bracket match should be Virtus Pro versus Tempera. Should be. Actually, I don't know why I'm so nervous about this. Europe's major probably has the easiest bracket to call. It's going to be VP, but it's going to be close. Virtus Pro won their head to head match during stage two, so if we head back to Oregon in this series, you can probably put a map in the win column for them. And knowing that they both have the same number of wins in stage two doesn't give me much reason to think Tempera can have an X factor in this match. VP have major experience, the aggressive play style that can match nearly any team, and because of Tempera, still being a newer-ish EUL squad, it's the opposite feeling that I have for Empire. They have longevity and previous success, and it obviously makes me think they can rise back to the top, but Tempra is just... it's too fresh. Better luck next time, boys. Now it's just not the time. And for those of you hoping to see France versus France at some point in this bracket... Sorry. Unless you're betting heavy against all my predictions, in which case, congratulations, it can probably still happen or something. All right, I am the Messiah! He is! He is the Messiah! Now, fuck off! Day two begins with the upper bracket matchup between BDS and Empire. And now we're back at another 50-50 crossroads. Like, 
this kind of 50-50 crossroad. I'm not flipping a coin, that's too anticlimactic. We're doing this the legit way. Okay, so the role that BDS has been on through most of 2020 is a really good one. Aside from placing dead last in Pro League for season 11, they had a really good invitational run, they got to the August major and beat G2, and now they're also first place heading into this major. They've been showing the doubters up and keeping the meme alive, but I also still have a lot of respect for Empire in this scenario. I think this might just come down to counter -stratting. You might say, Jacob, it always comes down to counter -stratting. You dumb b But this match will be won or lost in the early preparation stage. The map selection, the operator bans, whoever does the most research on their opponent, in my opinion, wins this one outright. Though, I'm giving the slight edge to BDS, because they're on a hot streak, they've shown that their EUL formula is literally the best place for Shiko to excel, and I'm giving Empire a lot of respect here, because I think it's gonna be a close 2-1. That's one, two. I can't count still. So even though we don't get France against France, we do get Russia against Russia. And this is where I'm gonna get a little bit bolder. Yes, VP have had two past head-to-head -head wins against Empire. Yes, VP have had two majors this year, whereas Empire has not been to anything substantial. But in both of those majors for VP, they eked out wins against Na'Vi and made them both through tiebreakers. They barely made it to either August or November, and Empire can still do well even off of a BDS loss on the same day. I'm gonna give them all the space and all the credit right now. If one Russian team had to leave in this game, it wouldn't be Empire. It'd be the Coca-Cola Polar Bear mascots. Sorry. Is that an insult? I don't know if that's an insult. So, that locks us in to a grand final as it's BDS against Empire yet again with BDS having a one map advantage that they did not have when they faced G2 in the grand final in August. And as much as I do like the, we were the best, but now we suck, but now we're not sucking again thing that Empire's got going on. Uh, I don't know if it's enough here. BDS pain train is rolling down the tracks and <sighs> I don't know if it can be stopped right now. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how this game plays out versus their contest on the previous day for the upper bracket game if it does transpire this way. How teams adapt, make corrections from their previous game, that's going to be the thing I pay the most attention to. But I don't know if it's Empire's time to get back to the top just yet. Right now, there can only be one king, and its name is BDS. Takes it. So, that's my call. I'm sure you'll have reasons to disagree with it and tell me that I'm wrong other than just because I have a curse hanging over my head. Which, side note, apparently also doesn't exist when I'm on the mainstream for some reason. I got almost every single prediction correct when I was doing the North American qualifiers two weeks ago, and, uh... I wonder if that throws a monkey wrench into how this entire curse works. But Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the 6th through the 8th on the mainstream beginning on Friday at 6.30 a.m. Eastern. 6.30. That's 4.30 for me. I mean, even with the election going on, I haven't been sleeping, but still, this one's gonna hurt. Hit up my Twitter, my Twitch, and this YouTube channel for more in the coming days. Please and thank you, and I'll see you in chat this weekend.